Hi everybody, I'm Melinda and I'm bringing you another Clip Studio Paint tutorial. Well, it's actually a quick tip this time. This time I'm going to be showing you all about the subview window in Clip Studio Paint. So as you can see, I've got nothing on my canvas this time, but I have this little window open. This is where we're going to be putting all of our focus. Now what the subview window is, it's a little tool included in Clip Studio Paint. I'm pretty sure it's in all the versions, so you shouldn't have to worry about which version you have, uh, Pro, EX, or Debut. And it allows you to import reference images to refer to while you create art over here, while you draw and stuff. But right now, it has nothing inside it. Absolutely nothing. So, if you want to put something inside this window, you need to import some images from your hard drive. Now, the images actually have to be files on your hard drive. You can't just copy and paste something from PureRef or Google or whatever you're using. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Workrave wanted me to take a Pomodoro break, so I did, and I'm back after my break. So anyway, you need to have the image files actually on your hard drive in order to import them into the subview window. And sorry, I bumped the microphone. So we click this little open folder here, which says import when you hover your mouse over it. And I have some of my social media files here. What I might do, I might actually get some of my reference images and wait for, maybe I'll get this one of hands, this one of a hand spinning. There's this one that I got from Proko's website. Ah, uh, yeah, that'll be enough. So yeah, these are my images all imported into the subview window. So when you import images, you can actually select multiple files and Clip Studio Paint will organize them into this window. Right now I can only see one window, I mean one image, but if I've got these little arrow icons down here. This one says to previous image and this one says to next image. It's right next to the little import button, the open folder. So I go to this right arrow to go to the next image and there's my hands picture. And I can go to the next image and there's my other hands picture. Now as far as I know, you can import as many images as you want into this window, but if you've got a lot of images to refer to, like you're working on a full-length comic book or a graphic novel, I wouldn't recommend you put all of your references in here, because then this is the only way you can navigate between images, these little arrows. Yeah, you'll be spending half your time clicking these arrows. I'd recommend if you have a lot of reference images that you need to refer to, like about 10 or 20. I'd suggest using a third-party tool like PureRef or Quadro, or even just arranging all the images into a Photoshop document or something so that you have something to refer to there, or even on Pinterest. This, I recommend this if you just have a few, like about four or five or one or two images to refer to. But here we have the viewport controls. This little slider here, that lets me zoom in and out when I drag it, or I can click these little magnifying buttons to zoom in and out on me, of my image. And uh, yes, I need to explain what's happening with my cursor when I move it into this image area. When I select this subview window and I hover my mouse over the image, it becomes an eyedropper. And if I click in here, you see my foreground picture, I mean color. It's a color. Sorry, I'm mixing up my words this afternoon. This is my brush color and it has changed the color into that. 
into what I clicked on in here, which is extremely useful if you're trying to match up colors in photos. You see, I can change it to a grayish. Whatever pixel I click on in here, the brush color becomes. I know this doesn't seem very useful now, but it will be when you start to color your images. And I do need to point out that these images they aren't linked to any document files so what I can do I can actually close this don't save and my images are still in the sub view window so yeah they they start to crowd up and sort of stay there between documents that you're working on you can easily get rid of them from the sub view window by just clicking this little trash can here clear it says clear when I hover over it and it's a trash can and there we go and click the trash can again that gets rid of that image and we click the trash can and now my sub view is completely empty again so yes thanks for watching I really hope this was helpful oh and one more thing <laughs> I nearly forgot if you can't see the subview window in your interface, like I couldn't when I first opened this program, it's in window and you need to make sure that the little tick next to subview. So window, subview, and see that's what happens when I untick it. I can tick it again and that is where it opens up. So if you can't see the sub view, you just need to make sure it's ticked there. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope to see you later in a future tutorial. Bye.